I'm Go Sun Huat from Arts and Social Sciences, Year 3. Mrs. Chairman, I have a question for the Prime Minister. Does the Prime Minister foresee a decline in religious tolerance in the near future in Singapore? I do not foresee. I have already seen. <laughs> <coughs> I start off with 19... 1950, 45, I was too young, too busy with my own career. <clears throat> I came back and started practice in 1950. Religion was not an issue. But then you see, Islam had not gone through a resurgent phase. India had got independence, and a secular generation of leaders were in charge, Nehru. In Ceylon, you had a very westernized elite that took over. Uh, Buddhists nominally, but very accommodating of other religions. <coughs> and that was the mood throughout the world. And Singapore and Malaysia was part of that milieu. the climate has turned harsher. <clears throat> if you read Mark Tully on his book on India, he is the BBC correspondent in India, he points to Mrs. Indira Gandhi as the turning, as the person who made India more Hindu, because according to him, she was faced with a different situation and she decided to rally the North which was Hindu by appealing to the Hinduness. Meanwhile, of course, Islam had gone through a resurgent phase. But now it has a political tinge to it. It's a riot about power, about the way the Hindus were governing India at the expense of what Muslims claim to be their rights. I did not expect this to affect Singapore, but it has. A resurgent Islam is a fact of life. A resurgent Christian group going out proselytizing, evangelizing, was totally unexpected. We had always taken a free and liberal attitude. And we assumed that People will be sensible and live and let live. But you have this uh, uh, evangelist man called Seward, Nick Seward, some redemption church. What does he call himself? Seward. He says, go out and convert the Muslims. You are entitled to do so by the Constitution. Well, that's not very helpful, is it? It's reached a point where finally the Buddhists came to see me and said, would I open their, co their conference? Because they also feel, that, you know, what's happening? I thought we were going to live and let live. If this is what is going to happen, I'm going to assert my rights. So I accepted. And he gave me beads and so on. Well, I accepted it because nominally I'm a Buddhist. That is the secret of tolerance, that you have a generation in charge, like me, by and large secular in our approach, definitely in how to govern a country, and only too ready to concede the spiritual to personal beliefs, to whichever religion or religious group can convince you, provided the two are kept separate, that the religion contests your right to believe in certain values, but not to the extent that you push a government into implementing 
those values at the expense of other groups. Uh, Muslims tell me that's not possible. Islam is a total, all-embracing philosophy. The charismatic Christians tell me the same. And if this goes on, we're going to have unpleasantness. Friction there already is, clashes are coming. And my simple uh, position is, let's stop it before it's too late. It's all silly. However hard the Christians can try, they are not going to make Singapore a Christian society. It's just not possible. They have tried in China, it failed. There's something about ancient civilizations, both India and China, the Christians did not convert. They converted segments. You may say it's superstition, that uh, Kuan Yin or Ta Pe Kung are all superstitions. You may say Ganesh with his blue face and multi arms is again superstition. But it's given succor, comfort, relief to successive generations for thousands of years. Who are you to say that your Bible is not superstition? They have converted whole island communities like Fiji. All the native Fijians have become Christians, but not the Indians in Fiji. So I, I tell these Christian groups, let's have a sense of proportion. Let's live and let live. You're not going to change the world. Maybe you change a few individuals for a very brief period of time. Maybe a few years he gets excited and he's seen the light. But he's got, he's got to live. And you look at the Europeans. They were the earliest Christian nations. They're not excited. The churches are being de-consecrated and becoming bingo halls. So, why do we need to be excited? But we are going through that phase and I think sensible, sensitive, but firm government will write this patch. Soft government, trying to accommodate everybody, will lead to big mischief. 